Welcome to Notepad, I'm your host Ibrahim Sani. We're talking about building brands internationally and one such company here is RPG Commerce. Joining us for this evening is Melvin Chi, CEO and co-founder of RPG Commerce. Melvin, let's talk a little bit more about RPG Commerce. Um, what do you stand for? And of course, basically, how do you guys make money? Okay, cool. Hey guys, uh, my name is Melvin. I'm one of the co-founder and CEO of RPG Commerce. Uh, we built direct-to-consumer e-commerce brands uh, in the global markets. Uh, majority of our markets are actually in North America, so US, Canada, UK, Europe, Australia, and the rest of the world. Uh, even though we are based out of Malaysia, the whole team is out of here. We are about a team of about 140 uh, employees out of uh, our Malaysia office. We are based out of PJ. And uh, basically, we own a portfolio of e-commerce brands. Today, we have 10 brands um, across home and living and apparels uh, in RPG's portfolio. So what does D2C mean to us? Uh, all these brands we have in our portfolio are built all the way from zero ground up. So all the way from your product design to your manufacturing to your marketing, customer support, and the whole chain itself is all built in-house here. And ultimately, we're trying to solve um, the kind of problems or the gaps we see in the consumer space, uh, whether it be apparel or home and living, and uh, basically bridging, uh, removing that middleman and, and going directly to consumers and solving consumers' problems end to end. And today, we're 100% online as a business. All right, let's talk about innovations in retail R&D uh, because uh, you guys are priding yourself with behavior-first approach to products. Let's learn more about that. Definitely. A big part of our consumer today are millennials and Zen Z. Um, that's a big market of our consumers today. And I think, you know, we started the company very early on uh, analyzing consumers' behavior in the early days. Uh, for example, we realized that consumers today no longer go to a departmental stores and just you know, buy everything in one place. Now, consumers today want to resonate with a brand that you know, they believe in the vision, the story, the founders behind the brand that they sort of believe in. And hence, we created a multi-brand approach. And I think uh, that that is because the whole fragmentations that we see in the direct-to-consumer market, right, where you have a different brand for different products that you want to consume on your day-to-day -day basis. And that's why we created multiple uh, buckets of brands serving very different multiple touch points of day-to-day uh, -day consumers. For example, uh, across all brands of portfolio, we have uh, all the way from you know your kitchenware, pot and pan, up to your apparel, to your home and living goods. And I think uh, we are thinking about the whole consumer production revolving a day to day, right? All the way from you waking up in the morning, uh, what, what's the first thing that our, our tribes will be doing? And we label our cons consumers as tribes, right? Because ultimately, uh, we are you know behavior first, a consumer first, rather than uh, rather than marketing our, our product first in that sense, right? And ultimately, figuring out that problem and feeding out the right solutions to our consumers. And I think that's how we think about consumer behavior even up to today as a company. I want to explore some of the case studies that you guys have right now. Maybe you can share with us uh, how behavior first approach is being used to help your clients right now. Definitely. So um, one of the brand um, we started um, internally called Thousand Mouse. Uh, it's this, uh, and it's quite uh, widely known here in Malaysia market as well, even though our main markets are overseas. Uh, is this, we started with, oh, with just a single product. Uh, it was an all-day packable shorts when we started. This was back in uh, the start of 2020, just so just before the pandemic. Uh, we realized was that um, we were serving a consumer, male consumer market, and realized that male consumers generally are pretty, um, I would say, carefree about uh, the, the, the kind of piece of uh, products that they use on a day-to-day -day basis. They were looking, you know, most males were looking for like a single pair of shorts or pants that could bring them from, morning workout to you know day day to day commute to all the way to the night uh, if they're hanging out with their friends and i think that's how we started with just a single product a thousand miles all day packable shots and i think um true we did a lot of studies uh, with our potential consumers before we launched um the, the big problem highlighted was that uh they didn't want to bring multiple pair of shots when they go out or when they go for a short vacations traveling over a long weekend as well uh, they wanted to bring a you know just a backpack and they could travel for four days three night or even three days two night in in, in a, for a short vacation right before the whole lockdown happened and i think that's how we sort of did a lot of consumer studies with, with our potential customers at a point of time uh, in early 2020 and we launched this all day packable shots where a single pair of shots could bring you from your morning to night and from there on today the brand has revolved around the all day sort of a series that we call it where you have all day pants all day shots all day tees that really sort of uh, fit every single part of your 
puzzle of a day-to-day -day life. And I think that's how we sort of think about uh, launching products or creating products, uh, being a product-led, consumer-led company today. Could you explain a little bit more on how innovation and tech is being used as a catalyst for global reach? Because you mentioned your business has a global footprint. Maybe you can share more on this point? Definitely. When we started RPG Art, um, we, you know, we were built on internet. And I think uh, when we started the business, uh, we always envisioned it to be a global uh, first because we are an internet business. We shouldn't be limited by geographically uh, constrained where we are only in Southeast Asia or we are only in Malaysia. Hence, uh, that has always been a big motivation for us. Uh, and today, of course, we have uh, fulfillment hubs across five different regions in the world, all the way from the US to Australia to Netherlands, Hong Kong and Malaysia, uh, to really serve uh, uh, the consumer, the global consumer markets. And all of this happened because of tech and internet uh, that really happened on the back end, even though everything else is managed out of our KL office here, uh, but we are very global business uh, uh, from the day one uh, of the business today. And this is all empowered by internet and tech. <laughs> Now, can you share a little bit more about RPG's R&D processes and how does this nurture a conducive working environment uh, for this to uh, push forward your business? Definitely. So I think uh, back to every product that we create here in the company, uh, we do a lot of on-ground consumer research and insights. So what does that mean for us? So every brand, they will have a focus group of consumers um, uh, basically our customers uh, that we have sort of brought in over the period of time. And whenever we started a brand, we always sort of envision, okay, this is the certain group of consumers that we want to be selling to, or we want to be, we, we want them to consume, to consume our products and whatnot. And of course, uh, time to time, we will have to cross um, check balance, whether, you know, our statement or, or, or what we think about consumer is true. And that's how we sort of form a lot of small group of focused consumer studies on ground with them. Uh, our product team, our marketing team will sort of really sit in, talk to them, think about new product line with them as well and sort of bring them to be part of the R&D journey, right? And we believe in product created by the consumer, for the consumer, rather than we shove the products out of the consumer directly, right? So I think a lot of that happened on the first stage of conversations, like, hey, understanding how are they using the products day-to-day -day basis, how they start consuming it, how often, how frequent, you know, what's their lifestyle? And ultimately funneling all this in our data warehouse to sort of understand how do we combine all this data, this concrete data from consumers to actually the kind of market data we are sort of seeing, right? the intelligence that we're get, sort of getting. And that product team will sort of work with our uh, external R&D arms or agencies that we work with as well to create products that are truly innovative. And I think, you know, as a, as a company today, as RPG, we never want to create just any random, you know, OEM products in the market. Every product in RPG is designed proprietary to us. Uh, uh, it's completely... 100% uh, owned by us in terms of IP as well. And I think that's how we sort of want to approach R&D and really putting consumer first when we design our products. All right, we'll go for one short break. When we come back, we'll discuss a little bit more with RPG Commerce. Thanks for staying on with us. I have with me on the line Melvin Chi, CEO and co-founder of RPG Commerce. Melvin, you were talking a lot about the business itself, but I want to understand more about why retail? Why not B2B, um, uh, brick and mortar? Why not non-retail? What's the specific, I guess, intent on this? Definitely. I think, you know, first and foremost, retail is still a huge part of our consumer spending today. Uh, as we can, can tell from data, but of course, um, you know, because of the pandemic, um, there's a whole acceleration of people that used to not shop online um, and now are shopping online. And as we open up and going back to this new norm, I think there's a lot of opportunity, especially in retail, because we see retail as a touch point of consumers, right? There are certain groups of consumers that we are probably not serving today that are existing in the market that we want to touch on. And hence, you know, we are putting efforts into creating experimental stores or pop-up stores across the world to actually enable consumers to, to feel and touch our products because ultimately that will open a whole new world for our consumers. And I think that's how we sort of think about opportunities in, in retail. And even though, you know, 
brick and mortar stores has been something that uh, a lot of people say probably it's, it's sort of going off and whatnot, but we still believe that the end-to-end, O2O kind of experience will be super important as a D2C brand in the future as well. How important is it for Malaysian brands to have a global footprint? How is uh, RPG leading the global retail revolution and putting our name out there? Definitely, I think, you know, um, especially being this part of the world, we are pretty strategic in, in most of the things, right? You know, we have, um, we have our manufacturing hubs across Indonesia, Thailand, China as well, strategically. And, and, and to be fair, internet has been so transparent that you don't have to be in the other side of the world to be selling to consumers in the other side of the world. And there are a lot of resources that you can sort of leverage to get into new markets and whatnot. And I think um, a lot of times, probably a lot of Malaysian businesses or businesses that are out of Southeast Asia uh, probably do not sort of think about you know expanding uh, globally, um, you know, uh, or even regionally in a sense, right? But I think uh, as an internet business, or if you are built online, uh, we should think about scalability. We should not be limited by geographically limitations or constraints. And I think uh, it's super important, right, for for all Malaysian businesses or uh, businesses in this region to sort of think about serving consumers in other side of the world, especially when uh, the world is so connected at this point of time. We'd be remiss if we didn't talk about how COVID-19 impacted the retail industry. Maybe uh, you can share with us some of the insights on this point. Do you think that the retail market globally is going to remain soft in the near term? Or do you think that businesses are going to pick up soon? Um, I do think you know consumer spending will still continuously be there, whether which channel it will belong to at this point of time as we sort of open up the market as well, uh, post the whole, you know, the, the, the peak of COVID kind of era, right? And I think uh, what's interesting, I always tell this story, right? That, you know, my, my parents live in a really small town um, in Perak that used to not shop online uh, their whole life, right? Uh, in the last 50, 60 years, right? And, and during pandemic, they started buying groceries, started buying every single thing online. And I think there's a whole revolution that is moving on, especially on the, on the boomers and, and the other gen, uh, gen X sort of generations, right? That, People that used to not shop online are sort of moving online and, and sort of there's a shift of uh, or additional add-on of, of consumer spending in, in the market, right? And I think those are the kind of like markets that are cap, uh, can be captured by a lot of businesses, uh, especially you know moving from offline to online or vice versa. And I think uh, it's, it's just super interesting, right, to see that happening today that would never happen probably before COVID, right? And I think uh, we're still very positive about the consumer market, or at least the D2C market, uh, sp- spending is still going to be there. Our, our life will still have to go on. People still have to continue spending to, to, to gain better, you know, insights of products and whatnot. And I think, you know, it, it's definitely here to stay uh, and we don't expect any decline anytime soon. <laughs> Your primary market is in the US, but what about other markets, especially emerging markets like, I don't know, Africa or China or anywhere else? Um, Any chance of entering these markets? Definitely. Um, Surprisingly, Middle East is pretty interesting to us. Countries like Kuwait, Saudi, UAE as well. Uh, It's pretty large chunk of our revenue today. And I think we continuously see strength of growth in those markets due to, you know, spending power and of course the kind of offerings or the kind of white space in the market as well. Uh, we see opportunities there. Uh, and even in Southeast Asia as well. Today we are across uh, most of the countries in Southeast Asia. We see a lot of growth as well, uh, which we were not concentrating previously, but of course, moving forward, we will be paying more attention into emerging markets as well. The ongoing conflict in Ukraine and Russia is a signal that things aren't going to be business as usual for 2022. Are these events going to impact your business this year? Definitely, I think, you know, it's only part of a challenge that we got to navigate through as a consumer company. We do see, especially during COVID period and, and the whole uh, previous pre-COVID where you had the China and the US trading uh, issues as well. We see rising costs. We see things that are, you know, being delayed and whatnot. But again, I think you know these are all, uh, you know, part and parcel of building a business or actually building a global consumer business. And I think, uh, at least from what we are observing right now, uh, it's not directly affecting us. But of course, in the long run, probably even the whole China 
uh, electricity rationing previously as well as affected our supply chain and whatnot. But again, I think it's just a matter of time that we will navigate through and sort of uh, get to a better place, uh, hopefully across, you know, whatever industries that we're in as well. All right, bringing the business home right now, what are the plans for the home market in Malaysia? Definitely, I think, you know, as you, at least what we can see in this part of the world in the last three years or so, um, and probably a little bit background to that, I, I spent about seven, eight years abroad uh, before coming back home to Malaysia in 20, 2018, 2019. And we definitely see an increase in terms of the quality of life, the quality of products that we're consuming today. Uh, think about it, you know, uh, back in those days, we were probably consuming a lot of non-branded goods or just, you know, anything that just sort of fit our day-to-day -day kind of usage. But today, as we see, Consumers are a lot more educated, a lot more, you know, conscious about the kind of products they're consuming. People care about sustainability. People care about the kind of packaging that we're using. People care about every single part, uh, process of making a product, right? And I think that's a sign that, you know, consumers are uh, even more mature uh, in consuming day-to-day -day products. And we will see uh, that there will be a certain shift in consumer markets in the coming years to come, right? And I think that's super interesting, right? Because the majority of consumption will still be in a millennials and Gen Y, Gen Z as well. And I think um, there's still a lot more opportunities to be captured here. And the beauty of the, you know, at least in this region of Malaysia is that the amount of competitions you see in the US versus Malaysia is super different. In the US, such a mature market, you are one of millions in the market. Whereas in Malaysia, there's a lot more opportunity to stand out because the kind of competitions that we see here is still not as steep as what we're seeing in the US market. And I think that's just creating more opportunities for entrepreneurs or SMEs in this region to be able to do something um, for themselves and, and to capture the opportunities. Uh, um. How do you leverage your clients' data then? Because I want to understand how you can find data synergy across the businesses that you work with uh, without violating your clients' privacy or data security, uh, but trying to find or extract value from this. I think, you know, I think one thing to note is all the brands in RPG uh, are owned 100% by us. So in a sense that we are, we do not serve any of the clients in our portfolio, but all of them are individual brands uh, within the company and 100% owned by the company. We do see a lot of synergy of uh, data that we are sort of learning from customers from brand to brand basis, right? And I think, of course, ultimately, uh, all these brands and businesses are not sharing data across one another on you know, on Apple to Apple sort of basis, right? But of course, we are doing a lot more learning in terms of behaviors behind each of these brands, each of these transactions, and how do we sort of leverage that with our business intelligence, right? To understand the kind of data that we're seeing on the back end. And I think that whole piece is the whole synergistic part that we talk about, right? How do we synergize brands in the perils to home and living? And how do we draw tangent or relationship of uh, home and living consumers to our kitchenware brands or products, for example, right? And I think those are the things that can be shared on the back end uh, without compromising any data privacy or in any way, but really understanding and analyzing the consumer behavior to make our assumptions or to make our sort of hypothesis around, right? To 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 create a better experience for consumers end of the day. And I think that's how we think about leveraging each other's sort of data or, or uh, synergies behind. Right, final question here. What can we expect from RPG uh, in the next few months? Definitely, a um, couple of things, you know, um, we are definitely going to be growing our existing brands in our portfolio uh, to, to have bigger footprint across the world, uh, even in this part of the world as well. We will be launching more and more brands uh, in different categories uh, across globally and local markets. And also we are looking into M&A and acquisitions where we will be partnering up with uh, brands or SMEs that has great, amazing team, amazing products, but lack of the whole uh, commercial piece of scaling and, and probably you know access to capital resources and whatnot. And I think that's where RPG wants to come in and really help and grow the team uh, and the business to a new whole level. And I think those are the kind of things that we have uh, work in progress still in our pipeline. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, that was a very insightful conversation. Uh, that was Melvin Chi, the CEO and co-founder of RPG Commerce. Uh, if you've missed any part of this interview, just head on to Astro Awani, look for Notepad or look for RPG Commerce. You can find a lot more resources there. Until then, thanks very much for watching. Me, Brian Sunny. Catch you in the next one.